Welcome to yet another video on SRID Cloud. In this video, I want to talk about object storage aspect of OpenShift Data Foundation. I'm going to show you how to use ODF as an object store, both as a local object store as well as an object store on any of your popular um, public clouds. So let's get started. OpenShift Data Foundation exposes object store in two different uh, formats, actually. One is the internal. The Redos gateway component of ODF acts as an object store. And using the Nuba component in ODF, you can also extend the usage of object store on ODF into any of your public uh, object stores. For example, AWS or Amazon, um, or Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud Platform or IBM Cloud, they all offer object store. So if you have an account in all these, uh, in any of these uh, public clouds, you can read and write using the buckets created on them. So let's see how they're all done one at a time. So we're going to start with the internal Redos gateway in the OpenShift Data Foundation. It's called Redos Gateway. There is a default backing store created on the Redos gateway on OpenShift Data Foundation automatically for you. So you don't have to create that backing store. And then we're going to create an object bucket claim. And as soon as we do that, OpenShift Data Foundation operator will automatically create the secret and object bucket for your intended functionality. And then using the S3 protocol, you can read and write data and from uh, the uh, object bucket. You can download the AWS CLI, which can be used as a S3 protocol tool to perform read and write operations. And then we are going to pick one of the external uh, public cloud. I'm going to pick IBM uh, container object store, and I'm going to create a bucket on that particular public cloud. And then using the same um, OpenShift Data Foundation functionality, like backing store and bucket class and object bucket claim and so on, you can read and write data into the object store on the public cloud. So I'll be using the same AWS CLI to perform the S3 protocol operations. So now let's start with the uh, internal um, option. The first thing you need to do is create an object bucket claim on OpenShift Data Foundation. And on the right side, you can see the YAML file. So in this YAML file, you specify the kind as object bucket claim, and then provide a name, like RGWOC bucket. And then you need to specify the storage class name, as mentioned in this uh, chart. So the moment you create this particular object bucket claim, the um, OpenShift Data Foundation will automatically create a secret for you. So internally, to access the Redos Gateway-based object store, there is a user ID and password and credentials and so on. So those credentials will be retrieved and will be uh, used to create this secret. So later on, when we uh, see the bucket claim, you will see a reference of this particular secret in it. So under the data section, you can see the access key ID and then access uh, uh, the secret secret access key, which is equivalent to user ID and password. These values are actually coming from uh, the ODF internal Redos gateway. And these are encoded, by the way. Now let's uh, see what else is automatically created when you create the um, uh, object bucket claim. So here is the object bucket automatically created for you by ODF. And you can read through the, um, the, the details here. Under the uh, endpoint section, you can see the bucket name, which is similar to what uh, we created in the, in, the, in the previous slides. The bucket port 443, that is the secure port. And um, also the storage class name is same as what uh, we mentioned earlier. So now with the object bucket, the secret, and object bucket claim are all created for you. 
you can start reading and writing data into or from the bucket. So for that, as I mentioned earlier, you need to download the AWS CLI or any other S3 protocol CLI that you can find. Uh, or you can develop one on your own as well if you understand S3 protocol very intimately. So here is the um, uh, method to use AWS CLI to read and write data from the object store. So you need to probably uh, create these four uh, environment variables if they are not set. The first is the uh, CA bundle. So on your system, wherever you want to run this AWS CLI, using the OpenSSH tool, you need to create a, a certificate authority certificate. And in this example, I created such a service CA certificate and placed it under the cert folder on, on the root. And then the AWS access key ID and then the secret access key are all the same from the secret automatically created by ODF, which I showed you in the previous uh, slide. And then the last line on the right side is the command line. So this command line tries to copy whatever is under test objects folder into the object store. So this is how you can write data into the object store or into the object uh, bucket, I should say. If you want to read from the uh, object store into your local folder, then you simply reverse the last two parameters. That is how the AWS CLI works. Uh, the S3 protocol uh, based is the AWS CLI can read and write data from the object store. So this is the very high level method to use the local object store in OpenShift Data Foundation. So now let's go and see how we can do the same thing on the external object store like IBM Cloud, for example. So on uh, the IBM Cloud, you need to create what is called a container object store instance and also a bucket. And then you should also go and look into the service credentials section and then get the access key ID and the secret access key. This method is very similar on all other public cloud platforms as well. The methodology is create the bucket and the service account on those cloud and then get the access key and the secret access key and mention it in this particular YAML file to create a secret. So this secret is something that you need to create to start with. So this is the first step in, um, in defining your functionality uh, for your workload to read and write data from the object store on your public cloud. So after creating this secret, you should create a backing store. So this backing store will be different from the default backing store created in ODF. The default backing store available in the OpenShift Data Foundation is for the internal RADAS gateway, which we saw in the previous section of this presentation. So you create this object um, um, back, backing store and you mention the endpoint. This endpoint in my particular case against uh, IBM Cloud is whatever that is mentioned here in purple. But it could be different in if you are using some other public cloud like Amazon or Azure or Google Cloud Platform or any other public cloud uh, of your choice. So this backing store will enable the ODF to connect the ODF implementation locally to the public cloud um, container object store. And then the next step is to create the bucket class. So here is the YAML file for that. And as you can see the bottom section, the tiers under backing store, you mentioned the name of the backing store which you created in the previous step. And also the placement, you can see it, it is set to spread. There are a lot more other options available. You can look into the documentation and get uh, those details. Now you should create a bucket claim. Um, here is a YAML file for that and you specify the bucket class that you created in the previous section here. 
And importantly, you should also specify the storage class name as, as mentioned here. The functionality of um, writing or reading data from any of your external public uh, cloud object store or object storage into your local um, workload is offered by a component called Nuba. Nuba is the um, uh, one of the components in OpenShift Data Foundation that offers what is called a multi-cloud gateway, which can be used by your application workload to spread your object data across uh, multiple um, object storage on public clouds, more than one public cloud. Now, with the bucket claim created, you can use the same AWS CLI command that I showed you earlier to read and write data from the uh, object store. So this is it. So this is how you create uh, YAML files and then and then install them so that your application workload running under OpenShift with OpenShift Data Foundation can read and write data from the local object store as well as the public object storage. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you all in another video very soon. I'll talk to you later. Bye.